ready. Let's do it. I think it's ready. Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. This is Dora. And this is Toby. Hi, how's it going? And welcome to our home. So you can probably tell that uh, this is a rebel home. Well, it is. Yes, we've got the Extinction Rebellion and Rebellion flag up there. This is standard, by the way. And we have, got, as you can see, we have megaphones, piles of megaphones in, in front of our uh, plants in the corner. So anyway, why are we here today? Uh, we are going to be joining Cooking for Climate. Yeah. Um, there is so much going on in the world right now, and I hope you guys are all safe and healthy. Um, and there is so much that we can help with each other at this moment. So what we are going to do is to share an amazing, healthy and inclusive and easy recipe. That's the idea anyway, isn't it? Well, I hope it's going to be easy enough, but... And we're bringing, we're bringing our home to your homes, basically. The idea is to, to you know, we're all alone. We might feel, so, you know, alone and scared and a bit worried and a, yeah. bit, a bit dark sometimes, but we're all in this together. And this is, this is one of the main reasons we're doing this. It's really, really important to, to know that we're out there, you're out there. So thank you for being out there as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you want to look up more information, Extinction Rebellion released um, a documentation you can get online for free. Yeah. It's the hashtag alone together. Um, it's available on the website, so you can download it and it gives a lot of information about one-on-one -on -one support, community support and so forth. And just ideas, you know, just, just how, to, how to deal with being yeah. alone and what you can do and, and what we can all do together. Alone together. So what are we doing together alone tonight? And I, together? I, can't, I can't personally, I can't remember what we're doing, but... Uh, <laughs> so we're doing a meatloaf. It's going to be a plant-based meatloaf. So both of us have been plant-based for the last, what, three, four years? Three years for me, I think, four years for Yeah, for yeah. So we have a lot of ideas to share, which I think is going to be super useful for a lot of you guys, because you might have children who are plant-based and you are not, or the other way around. Um, we are also we also choose a recipe that is also gluten free. Yeah. So it's also more inclusive to those who have intolerances or um, preferences. What else? We also try to choose things you can get in bulk, without packaging. And it's relatively cheap. It's simple. It's easy. You know, everyone can do it. I mean, it, it's really really. Dora cooked this uh, a few days ago, and it tastes amazing. So that's yep. always a bonus. Should we give a little teaser at how it's going to look like, or should we? Mm, not? No, we can do that later. <laughs> All right. I reckon later. So, so stay with us. Um, it's going to be quite an easy recipe for about half an hour. Yeah. So if you're happy to stay around, then please do. So I'm going to be cheating today and I'm going to be using a blender instead of chopping things up. If you don't have a blender, then you are always free to just chop things up, use a grater to make things um, more fine. But basically, let's introduce the ingredients. Yeah, what we? we got? What we got? So we are going to use uh, carrots. It's two carrots, um, and we are going to have what else is in there? Celery, onion. Uh, onion, celery is my big, big finding. I think I used to hate celery, but uh, uh, for the past few years, I just fell in love with it, and it's super healthy. Oh, it's amazing! It's, it's got really all these great. vitamins, I think K, A, and B, carbohydrates, yeah. loads of minerals, and always. I mean, it's got so much water in it, which we, uh, which is yeah. so, so important. We put this into our morning smoothie as well. We it's, a, it's a bit floppy. <laughs> it's a bit tired it's today. Still, <laughs> it's still very tasty though. So, so um, we already pre-washed them, by the way. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, this is really important right now. The washing, washing the vegetables and, and everything you, you, you bring into your home. Are there, I mean, if you have an outdoor um, tap, if you can wash them before you come in, that's, that's great because of the, the virus and, you know, it's so, so important. But if you can't, just bring them in, get a bowl specifically for it, and just wash them before you put them into your baskets yeah. or into your fridge, just to be on the safe side. Because so many people have been handling them, including yourself, and you know you never know what's on your hands when, out, yeah. when you're out there. So I think it's very, very important. Yeah, there. and you're also going to um, bake the, the meatloaf, the, the plant-based meatloaf, so that's going to hopefully destroy any remaining oh, that's true. virus. I wondered where you were going then. <laughs> so it'll destroy all the taste. <laughs> It'll burn it. <laughs> That's also possible. Yeah. So anything is possible in this kitchen. Anyway, so the recipe is very simple and I put this in the description. So if you go up on top and you open the full description, the origin recipe is there. Now, what we do is we adapt to circumstances. Of course. And we couldn't get all the ingredients. So we are going to use whatever we have at home, which is something that you can do as well. Yeah. And we are going to... Um, give you some options and ideas on what else you can use if you don't have the ingredients that we have. So, just quickly, we... that's one of the one of the good things about this is when Dora was telling me what the ingredients are and and so forth, she was telling me that there are so many different options that we have with this meal yeah. and with this with this recipe. It's so so good. So if you don't have 
what we're showing here, what we're putting in, then we'll come up with alternatives yeah. as we go along. Yeah, yeah. So um, for the meatloaf, uh, I'm going to use two carrots. <laughs> carrots. Bang. Celery. It's two celery stalks. Is it stalks? Stalks. Stalks, yep. Um, and I think basically that's it for now. I might add the onion as well. Choppy chop, choppy chop. So again, I mean, we're just going to whoop it up in that, whatever it's called, blender. Um, but you know, you can just grate it at home or chop them as finely as you like. Yeah. So important. Shall we? Yeah. Get ready. Close your ears, guys. Pause. Heartbeat, heartbeat. I think that's it. That's it. And again, you can use a, a grater as well to do this. So I think that, said that, is, five times. <laughs> that is uh, celery and and carrots and onion. Onion is not in there. Yet. Oh, man. Um, can you? I'm gonna put some oil. Yes, some oil, please. Yeah. So at the moment we're using uh, olive oil because I had some. Uh, this was Greek olive oil, which is really lovely, but um, obviously it was imported. So you can use uh, uh, what's called rapeseed oil, which is UK, but you can get UK based flaxseed oil. Flexible oil should be local. Should be local. You can get local as well. But we're using at the moment olive oil, um, which is, tastes really nice. I like it a lot. Yeah. So I'm just going to put a little bit in there, not too much. Yeah. Because some people don't necessarily agree with it. Is that enough? Yeah. I think it's a good point to yeah, say. Yeah. Go on, you can take you it. Can, you can, um, agree with it. So I don't actually use a lot of oil in my household. I didn't used to before. And you can easily cook vegetables or. Um, make the onions translucent without oil as well. So if you use a little bit of water on the bottom and uh, you just uh, steam them basically and you keep replacing the water as it evaporates and it's, it's good enough. And uh, the onions will cook perfectly as well. So I put in the onions now. That's not good. Okay. That's always a scary me. It scares me. I forgot the garlic stuff. So. Oh, and the garlic. That's really scary. Okay. So this is all, I mean, you know, the vegetables, vegetables are always great. You know, any, any, yeah. uh, anyone recommending a healthy diet will always recommend vegetables and fruit and so on and so yeah. forth. So yeah. this is a very, very healthy meal. And the other reason why I personally chose, and I think you too as well, yep. chose a plant-based diet is because it has the lowest environmental footprint as well. Whether we consider animal culture as a whole and uh, the methane gas that is generated by the cows, or whether we consider the transportation of oh. all that and the waste and, and the processing of the, the meat and so yeah. forth. Um, it is the, the constantly least environmental destructive diet that I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that actually brings us to an rebellion of the movement of movement that has been joined by many, many uh, exercise sister movements, yeah. including Animal Rebellion as well. Animal Rebellion. Yeah. Hello. And uh, if, if anyone is watching for Animal Rebellion, hi guys. Hi. I hope you're well <laughs> and staying healthy and safe at home. Yeah, at home. So yeah, uh, Animal Rebellion was really uh, set up alongside Extinction Rebellion. And it was uh, Dora here is actually one of the co-founders of Animal Rebellion. You went up in April. Oh, it's. Uh, I'm it's a long it's story. But long wanna, story, yeah. If you want to tell the story, so it's really interesting. Oh, it's an amazing story. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of people have been inspired by the April, Re April Rebellion, which was the first big one, <laughs> including um, some people I knew, and we decided that uh, we are going to start a sister movement and focus on a plant-based food system. And now there's an amazing team. I, I barely do anything anymore. There's such a great team now. Um, and it's worldwide as well. It's, yeah. it's, spread, it's, it's spread like wildflower. Wildflower? Yeah. Wildflowers. 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 Wild this is the best way. <laughs> so today, wildflowers in Australia. It's so to Toby's an amazing gardener, so he probably speaks about the wildfires because wildflowers he's missing are fantastic. the gardens yeah, yeah. this week. And rewilding is the best. Always rewild. <laughs> I garden and I chop things down, but um, I'm trying to get everyone to rewild, which is so, so important. Leave, yeah. leave, leave little corners or leave whole gardens for, the, for nature to come back and, uh, and enjoy. Absolutely, and I think you have a lot to share about permaculture as well, which is another way to address not only the current situation where we have to be self sustenant but for the future. Oh, it's amazing. So permaculture is sort of basically a, a philosophy, a way of life in the guise of gardening. And there are three main principles. 
whenever you, when you um, decide to do a project or, or, or carry out any, any kind of work, there are th you have to just con consider the impact on people, the impact on, uh, on the, the world, and basically uh, whether it's sustainable and whether, whether it's finite or not, and, and not be greedy. It's, it's, it's an amazing way of looking into every project. It's more like a lifestyle as well yeah, yeah. than just um, a gardening method or... A and it's also no chemicals and it's also using what you have. So if you have a garden that can produce carrots, don't force it yeah. to produce potatoes, if that makes sense. So back to our food. So basically the onions, the celery and the carrot have been here for about like five minutes. Yep. It's good enough. And I'm just going to add some salt and pepper now. Actually, can you please speak? I can, I can do that. That's something I can do. <laughs> Salt and pepper, and the rest. The original recipe says to use soy sauce and liquid smoke, but we don't have them. However, I found hoisin sauce, which is also um, quite a, um, a rich taste. Oh, so really nice. I'm just really going nice. to add a few um, tees good. teaspoons. If you don't have that, we can also use barbecue sauce or just ketchup, and add some spices and turmeric to make it jazzy and uh, colorful. But that's what I'm going to use this right now. Is the hoisin sauce nice? Mm -hmm. Which is also gluten-free, by the way, if anybody is uh, sensitive to that. And we also use the Himalayan pink salt, or pink Himalayan salt, which is, I think is actually really, really... You only need to put a little bit on, which is really good. Yeah. Because we don't need too much salt in our diets either. And you can also refill that. Refill what? Um, that thing. Oh yeah, this is refilling. You don't need, need to really rebuy it in the plastic. Okay, so that was about like three spoons, I think. That's, that's more than enough. That's a nice. <laughs> And you finished with this now, haven't you? Yes. And so now comes the, the most interesting part. So in the origin recipe, it's recommended to use canned chickpeas and just mash them up. But I don't have canned chickpeas, but I found chickpea flour at home, uh, which is again a super healthy, very protein rich um, substitute for um, basically a, a meat kind of dish. Oh, I know a lot of people are used to uh, set up very soon. there's a meat on the side and some um, little salad and rice or potatoes yeah i think for, for people who are used to that kind of setup and feel very familiar to that it's going to be an amazing um, option because oh. you still have that the threeness yeah yeah, yeah. and um, it's not majorly processed as well which is really good i mean the, you can call it processed when we put it in the processor yeah but it's not you know we don't it's not majorly processed so this is this is as whole food oh. as you can get without just eating it straight from the ground as well yeah so Okay, so quantities. I'm going to add about one cup of chickpea flour, but as an option, what else could we add? I, I think you could. Oh, oats, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you can um, you can get this, this the equivalent. Yeah. I'm going to maybe a spoon. Okay. So you, can, you can what the equivalent amount of oats? Yeah, I think it's same one same cup amount. of oats. And what you can also do is you can put it either directly if you want it a little bit chunky. Or you can put it in a, a blend it up yeah. and make it a little more, bit more powdery, so it becomes more of a more of a um, a, a, a flour. Yeah. And again, both of them are, are, are gluten free, which is always a bonus. <laughs> yeah. I think I think oats can't. Some oats are processed in in plants that may not be gluten free, so you've got to be careful if you're a celiac, um, just to check the labels all the time. Yeah, it's um, better. Yeah, to get the. Just to be on the safe side. Yeah, the, the officially gluten free yeah. ones. I'm but sure if you see the act out there, you know exactly what's what. Yeah, but. and the good thing with oats as well, <laughs> me, the good thing with oats is I think chickpeas are not local to the UK. Yeah, it's I, difficult I, to grow them. Yeah, they're just starting to grow chickpeas in the UK, like lentils. I think, you know, with this climate issue, um, the, the temperatures and the global temperatures and the annual temperatures within the UK are rising. So we're able to grow things that we didn't, weren't able to grow. Okay. Even five years ago, it's, it's quite crazy, isn't it? Add some more, maybe. Yeah, so... Sorry, yeah, oats is more actually, of a local. I'm just going to add some oat for it. We're going to add some local. Uh, for Where is it? Oh, no, it's uh, in there. Sorry. Okay. So, um, yeah, we keep a lot of our produces. So, uh, flowers um, and oats and nuts and seeds. And pasta and rice. In uh, the refillable yeah. glass. Uh, what is it? Jars. Jars. It's nothing fancy, so it was peanut butter before, and now we are using it as a storage, um, which is a very cheap way to keep things. But also, we go to we try to go mostly to refill shops. Yeah, zero waste. To not buy the plastic packaging with the goods, and then just take these to the shop or take a little bag, come home, refill, and just put it in our um, 
storage unit, <laughs> which we made actually. We did make it. We might show you that at some point, but uh, we're quite proud of it. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we made this thing. Um, I think zero waste is really, really important here as well. We're trying our best yeah. on a day to day basis to sort of find zero waste products. Um, we're really lucky we have an amazing zero waste shop uh, in Marlowe called Seed One, but they're popping up all over the place. Yeah. And this is so, so good for, for the world, for us. Yeah. Um, and we don't, we don't really yeah. not producing much waste anymore, are we? Not a lot. No, no, it's um, wonderful. Maybe we could show, I don't know if it's possible right now, no, but bins. we don't have a bin actually. Yeah. We have a box on the floor and <laughs> we throw, um, if any packaging we have, we throw it into that box, which is normally recycled stuff, paper or cardboard, and it goes into the recycling bin. If it's can I show the food waste? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the food waste is basically <laughs> an old tupper. <laughs> it's got a bit of a hole in it, so sometimes so, it leaks, um, so that's not good. Yeah, and we just throw them in as we, as we peel. It's normally peels, right? Yeah, and then that those actually go out to the um, to the council bins, so they, they 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 pick up the food waste from us, which is we're really lucky, and that goes to a general compost. But you can use food waste if you have a wormery, which are amazing. Although some people may not think keeping worms is a good thing, I and mean, we don't keep worms, but you can put them in your compost um, as long as you mix it up with with things like cardboard and newspaper, because if it's too wet, it gets a bit too sludgy, and you just can't use it. Yeah. But that's what we do, we just check it out. The last ingredient here is going to be breadcrumbs. And to stay with the gluten-free idea, I picked this gluten-free breadcrumb. But this is totally avoidable. If you don't have breadcrumbs, it, you might just have a bit of a different consistency, but you can totally put more oats or more flour. It's yeah, going yeah. to be just as good. I think I just like the crunch of it because when it bakes... Oh, it's amazing. It gets, oh, it gets yes. a bit crispy on the <laughs> yeah, top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, really so it's just going to add... So for quantities again, it's about maybe half cup of breadcrumbs with the cup of uh, oats and chickpea. It should be good enough. But again, you can't really mess it up. I mean, that's what I experienced. Well, I mean, you can mess it up. We can all mess everything up. <laughs> but even if you mess it up, it doesn't that's matter. What, that's what Toby says. He, he would never tell me. That <laughs> no, I think... I, think <laughs> the pro I, love, I love cooking and I love the process of cooking, you know, from... From, I mean, this is another thing about growing your own food, which we're starting to do now. We've got raised beds, we've got herbs in pots out the back and so forth. We're propagating. And I think the idea to have planted a seed and then grow it and then Sorry. pick it and then put it on your table and, and cook it and, and then eat it. I mean, how amazing is that? Yeah. It's sustainable, uh, zero waste, or really, really hardly any waste. I mean, no really any fuel burnt in it. So this is, this is the future growing your own food, whole foods, and just going through the process, the wonderful, amazing process of cooking. And we were saying before, you know, we cook together, I cook for you, you cook for me, we cook together, and it's a really good social and sociable thing to do. And especially now, that yeah. we're all a bit sort of, you know, we're all isolated, so that word sort of is a bit, it, it's a bit cold, isn't it? But we're all at home. Our homes are a wonderful thing. We've created these wonderful homes. And so we should be proud of being at home and. And, and feel safe, and, and I, I hope you all do, and I'm, I, I, we, I know we do. But with the cooking, you know, you can do it as a family thing. It's, it's wonderful. You can have people chopping the food, chopping the vegetables, while someone else yeah. mixes something else. And everyone can input their own ideas, because we all have different views on what we want to eat. And this is a great way of recognising that and, and acknowledging that. You know, you may have kids. Someone doesn't like chickpea flour, for example. So we then decide, okay... Banana head, uh, my son Banana Head doesn't like chickpea flour, so let's use oats. You know, it's just a wonderful little way of, of, of just a bit of fun, really, as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And also, falling in love with cooking is a good idea for the future as well. Yeah, yeah. It's again um, the disconnection that we have for food has yeah, yeah. been one of, I think, uh, one of the underlying issues of, of some of the problems we have today because uh, our life is mainly about running after jobs and chasing money. I think this is changing now um, and we know it's changing. It has already changed by this example. Yeah. So this is a, a good way to have fun while we're connecting to each other and to food as well, see where it comes from and slow down a little bit. And also think about what we put on the table, where it comes from, what are the health benefits and so forth. So I'm going to use um, this baking paper for the meatloaf just because I'm not a very good cook and I don't want to burn the food inside the, the oven. 
But it's also, it's e it makes it easier to handle, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not that you're a, not a very good cook. She's a great cook. <laughs> you wonder why we're together. Do you know what I'm doing this way? Hmm? Uh, I quite like the shape of it. Okay, cool. This here, actually, talking about zero waste, this was uh, uh, from, uh, what is it, the local, oh, it's a local falafel market? Shop. It's yeah. a falafel uh, guy, and he has uh, an amazing, what is it, a, a vegan meal for five pounds in, in High Wycombe. And uh, it's just full of, what is it? It's just all these fruit, and, uh, these um, chocolate oh, vegetables. A salad, vine leaf. Vine leaf, yeah, dolmadas. And it just came, it comes in this. So we bring it home, wash it out, and can use it. Nice. I think got this. Okay. So Reuse. Reuse. Oh, what are, the, what are the five R's? Is it five R's? Five R's. Five R's. What are the five R's? Re refuse. Refuse. Reuse. 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 Reduce. Recycle. Recycle. And the rot. And rot, which is really, really... I learned it. I know. Finally. I only know because of her. So these, are, these five R's are the principles of zero waste. And if you go by these rules, you can minimize your footprint. And I think it's, it's useful to remember with every choice that you make. It, I find it useful personally. That's, yeah. And you know, this applies to every part of our life. Oh, it? every part. It's, I mean, it's not just food, but sorry. Oh, no, go, go. I'm, I'm not, I'm it's just the, the refuse thing. I mean, I, you know, I didn't even think about that. You know, you go to the supermarket, or you did back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> and you go, uh, I've got you my shopping. And they say, uh, do you want a bag? And you just say, yes, I'll have a bag because you're giving it to me. It's free. I mean, and then they started charging 5p and I didn't like that. But anyway, that was a great uh, initiative. But you can always say no. We take boxes or if we don't have boxes, this is a great thing. The, again, this creature introduced me to was you go along the shelves in the supermarket or the, uh, the local market where you are, find an empty um, cardboard box or ask for one and just fill that up. We don't need plastic bags at all. All these different ways. So what I'm doing here, I'm doing the really difficult thing is I'm heating up some water. Very, very difficult to do in this day and age. Um, it's actually, I just put some, uh, I'm just boiling up some water so we can put the couscous in so we can make the couscous salad. That's all I'm doing, I'm not explaining that. Um, and then, we've what, what have you done? This is, is this ready to go in the oven? I'm gone. Yes, yes please. Okay, this is what it looks like pre-oven. And it looks very, very, I mean, to me, it looks tasty. Another thing that we have actually gone about is, are we gonna add this on top? Um, oh, I forgot about that. So I'm not sure if all of you are aware of uh, nutritional yeast flakes. So this is a really, really good thing. Um, this one specific, is specifically fortified with B12, which is really, really important for everyday life, for everyone, for nerve endings and brain functions and, and so on and so forth. Um, so deficiency in B12 is, is very, is, is, is impactful. It's not, it's not majorly great. And it doesn't only affect um, vegans, it affects non-vegans, it affects meat eaters, because in, uh, many of these, many of the, a lot of the meat, um, uh, uh, the factory farmed meat does not get B12 because B12 is found on in soil and these animals don't eat soil. So we all have the need for B12. Yeah. And this is great because, I mean, it looks a bit funny. It looks like fish food. So I think, yes, absolutely. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. On, I think me. we are going 90, 90 degrees uh, bent. Oh, no way. But it's fine. So, I thought we saw uh, do, yeah, do apologize, beginners, beginners illness. And we were told about so, this. So, <laughs> if you're like this a little bit, then just stay with us, turn your computer and... And you're not turning. And you're going to talk like this for the rest of the video. Oh, that's a shame. Anyway, can we not change that? I don't think we can. Okay, don't worry. Sorry about that. Classic. But anyway, so there is a question. Amigos, how much money cost a pineapple there? <laughs> how much is a pineapple? Two and a half? No, 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 you can get them for a pound. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pound, pound, 15. So we're gonna put this in the oven or what? Yes, please. So we preheated the oven to uh, 200 degrees before, and it will need about maybe half an hour, 40 minutes. It goes in, goodbye. See you in 40 minutes. And that's it. And now... We've got the couscous. We've got the couscous. So shall we switch that off and turn it around, or shall we, because um, it's on, on your, no? No, I don't think so. At least okay. it's like this. No. Oh, well, that's a shame. Okay, so I'm, I'm heating up the water for the couscous. 
Where is, we just lost it, haven't we? Okay, the couscous is here. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So that needs to be heated up. So what we did for the salad, um, it's going to be a cold salad, but very nice with the, the plant-based meatloaf, is we are going to add some, let's show this actually. We chopped this up beforehand, but we have got tomatoes, uh, cucumbers, pepper, some spring onion, dill, and um, parsley. Parsley. Oh, so yummy. once the couscous, <laughs> so once it's done, we're just going to toss this all on top, mix it up, and add some lemon and olive oil, and that's it. Basically, very easy and simple. It is very easy and simple, which is a bit like me. <laughs> and you can actually. <laughs> change any of these um, vegetables to anything else so if you have uh, let's say corn at home or, oh, or vegetables those. but any vegetable oh, really just all these different kinds of peppers i mean there's tons of them you can add carrots have you got carrots in there no carrot today because I we already had carrot carrots in uh... i know zoe we, we we managed to not turn it in the right way how if you can help me to switch it right now please let me know otherwise we're just going to go like this for the rest of the video which is a bit of a shame, but well. Oh well, well this is boiling now. So do you want to pour some couscous mm -hmm. in? So what we tried to do anyway, is we tried to get local foods, like UK based and local where we can. So we go to markets and then there's a, uh, a, um, a mini market that we go to, which actually just, I think they import things over from Europe. But we're using some products that you can't find here, like lemon, what else can't find here? Some peppers you can't find here. Um, and we try to minimize that, but we're in a system where it's actually, you know, if, if the system didn't allow these to come in, we, our countries, our, our local areas would have adapted right now, and they will adapt, we hope, to produce the alternatives or the replacements for these things. And if we didn't have lemon, we would find some, use something else. Right now, we have lemon, so we're actually using it now. Yes, I think out of all the ingredients we use, Lemon, as, as far as I can tell, is the only important no, stuff. No, sauce. I mean, the, the, for the couscous meal. Oh, for couscous. The rest of them, so tomato can be grown in the UK. Yeah. Um, cucumber, definitely. Cucumber can, can, pepper can, oh, peppers can be, onion, dill, like all of that. It's, it's just lemon for, for now. And for the meatloaf, the, the plant-based meatloaf, it's, it's really just the chickpeas, I think. The rest of the ingredients, carrots, celery, all that. Can be sourced from the UK. Yeah, yeah, and as we said, we can you can change uh, you can you know you can instead of chickpea flour you can use oats. So that's UK based as well. So who are we? What are we doing here again? Should we just remind everyone? Yeah. So this is cooking for climate. On the side. On the side. It's a side addition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, it's cooking for climate is a series of videos. And it's not just us, it's a bunch of people who have amazing recipes and ideas to share with everybody yeah, yeah. To, to show different alternates that we can all use at the moment, when, especially when getting food is quite a difficult task, uh, tough stuff for people. Um, also, we are trying to look at more sustainable options, which we should always look for, but I think especially right now, when people are counting money as well, um, and it's not as easy to get access to everything. We need more options and more ideas, and that's what I think we're trying to do with this series of videos. Yeah, yeah, and also to reach out to people who feel that maybe at home, or, or and and to show that we're still, you know, extinction rebellion, animal rebellion, the movement of movements, uh, and everything is still there. They're still solid. We're still, you know, doing. We're still thinking about things, thinking about now, thinking about the future, thinking about alternatives and options and and what we can do and share, just share, just sort of an entertainment really I mean I guess it's you know we, we we've all got these things coming in we're all at home and sometimes we just want to say hi to our friends and and listen to things that we want to listen to and see silly food and <laughs> eat wonderful people <laughs> yes and <laughs> this is a silly food <laughs> this is silly food right now just leave it that's cool okay what do you think so, um, absolutely, and um, oh, what else? So we, should we? Yeah, should we? No, about the plant-based, and why, why plant-based again? Yeah, we can, I think, uh, like we, the way we started the video, we have a plant-based kitchen, 
So um, everything, but at the beginning, I think it was a question for us how how do we substitute for omega threes and omega six? Um, how how do we make sure we get enough protein? I think yeah. these were the basic questions we had at the beginning. So it took a while, I think, uh, a couple of weeks to figure out what are the dip- replacement options. But after a couple ideas that you watch on YouTube or hear from a friend, it's, it's quite easy. So for example, for omegas, which is um, a question a lot of the times, what do you do for omegas if you don't eat fish? Yeah. Um, flex seed, which I actually left out of the recipe and I should have added it, but there it is. don't worry about that. Flex, flex seed is a good idea. Uh, chia seeds, which I think is import, so flex seed might be a better idea. But just general nuts and seeds, they have tons of omega-3 and omega-6 as Nuts, well. yeah, and they, they have so much energy. When I do gardening, so when I'm out in the garden, just munching on nuts yeah. and, and seeds is just so, so, so good. This is my one of my favorites. Um, and walnuts are really, really good for omega-3 pecan. and omega-6 and omega pecans. Okay. Oh, yeah. Are great as well. And you can throw them into meatloafs or salads as well. Or into your smoothies, if you have a smoothies. Anytime. So that's, yeah. Yeah, you can get omega six from um, uh, from plant seed oils as well, which is really good as well. So yeah, with plant based, I think you can find out there are lots of doctors online, lots of vegan nutritionalists. Hey, doctor, doctor, doctor um, Clapper, Clapper, Doctor Mike, Gregor, Mike, yeah, Doctor someone else, I can't remember. But there are lots of doctors. Well, the, the reason I think I think this series is concentrating on plant based food because of the impact of animal agriculture and fishing on the climate, which is obviously what we're all worried about. Extinction Rebellion, Animal Rebellion, and the movement of movements. And it's as important as, uh, you know, the impact, if not more important, or uh, the impact of aviation, of burning fossil fuels, of deforestation, of, the fa- of fast fashion. So it's, it's wonderful that uh, Extinction Rebellion and Animal Rebellion are, are acknowledging this, and we should all acknowledge this, and, and, and do our best to sort of, you know, we, we do our best not to fly, we do our best not to drive, in this system that we live in and which it's a good idea to do our best to reduce any impact and that includes the impact of the animal agriculture yeah. industries which we do with uh, abundance cooking which is also sustainable and just i think that's an important aspect is that the plant based food system we envision we envision is, yeah, yeah. is not on uh how to say is not just for our benefit it's for the benefit of the entire planet and there's a global solution but i think it's also interesting how a lot of families are now reconsidering a meat at all whatsoever because of the COVID-19 virus as well, which so came true. from, how do you pronounce it? Wuhan? Wuhan, Wuhan I think. Wuhan, Wuhan. Um, Wuhan province in China. We, we don't know really, but it is said that it might come from that um, live market. Yeah, yeah. And it was a wet market, so they had yeah, live animals and so forth, whether live or dead. I mean, these animals are still being eaten, I guess. And, yeah. And it, yeah, it just brings it to the forefront of people's minds, doesn't it? Yeah. Whether we, what happens when we interfere too much with nature, whether we actually need animals, animal um, foods, yeah. meats, it's, and so forth. And it's interesting as well that if we look at previous, I mean, not all of the epidemics, but some of the epidemics and some of the um, um, yeah, sorry, pre- previous epidemics that went on, like swine flu and so on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was a different, it, it was a it different kind of issue. That, but they all came from. Culture, yes. Yeah, a lot of it, a lot of it are, are diseases that we all know are linked to that. But it's yeah, it's really important, and people are generally cutting back on the meat they eat, which is wonderful because they're aware of the impact. And all these substitutes are coming up. I mean, it's it's we're, we're, we're very very lucky. I think that would be ready. Yep. All right. Do you reckon that's ready now? Yes. All right, cool. So now we're just gonna empty that out into the sink. Turn the heat off. Because that's something I forget every now and then. And then I come back and it's like, <laughs> but one thing also we is, is difficult, and a, an impact that may not have been thought of is when we're all at home, we're using more electricity. We're going to be using the computers more, the TV more, switching on lights and and the hot water, maybe more showers and more baths, because we've always got to wash our hands as much as possible, clean our clothes and so on and so forth. So it's good to be mindful of that, I think, as well. The amount of fossil fuel. That we're burning with by extra um, um, by staying at home. Okay, so how about I just start adding cucumber, onion, greens. Basically, I'm just going to put as much as I feel like, <laughs> and then just eat the rest of that as salad on the side. 
but I think we really enjoyed this couscous salad. It's oh, just it's just something else. It's not. Also, we talked about um, families we, before. We were just chatting, and we were thinking, you know, <laughs> all these families are in our home together all the time, and the the moms have to be creative and cook yeah. meals that are filling enough and exciting enough. And the salads might not be the most filling item. So not, maybe maybe not the most exciting. Yeah, and, and you know there's a lot of work with chopping and yeah. then what you end up with is actually a very low calorie. But if you add couscous, it will give it some uh, content. Some oomph. Yes, it's it's a lot uh, and some oh you can have rice with or pasta with it or quinoa, but quinoa again yes. there are some issues with quinoa sometimes. So what do you do now? So I'm just adding some olive oil because we like it. You like it. I like it a lot. Just a little bit. And lemon. And I think everyone likes lemon. Well, maybe not. Well, I like lemon. I used to not like lemon on my Did salad. Yeah, I thought it was too sour. Are you going to put any salt on that or just leave it as No, I just leave it as it is. And then mix that up. Yeah, mix it up and it's done. And then... That's so, that, 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 our... That. Yes, yo, go, go ahead. Our chickpea loaf is still in the oven. But we pre-made some. So we can show you the final product. <clears throat> so this is the, this is the pre-made. We've uh, obviously cut it up into wonderful pieces. It's going to add the salad on the side. So by the way, with this salad, you might want to wait a little bit because it's supposed to be a cold salad, but I have no patience because I'm <laughs> hungry. And also this is uh, alive. And you also you could pre-cook the, um, the couscous. So that's, a, that's another yeah. thing you can do and let it cool down. And that's the final product. And that is the final product on the side. <laughs> we do apologize for that. Uh, if we're ever called back, we're going to look, sort that one out. Yeah. So please, it, please, promise we're going to do this. So. <laughs> and also, if you have any please, neck please, injuries, please, please. don't blame us. Give us a second chance. All right. So anyway, this has been wonderful. I mean, I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Have you enjoyed it? I enjoyed it. Yes. Yes. Um, if there's any, any questions, just put them, put them up there and see if we can answer them. Yeah. Uh, there's recipes uh, on the link on the bio. Is that right? I, I put the original recipes in the bio, so you can just click down and see what the original recipe makers suggested. And remember that these are easy swappable recipes, so you can use anything else that you want instead of the defined ingredients. So yeah, just go, go free, go creative. Go very creative, because these are, these are strange times, but they're, they're beautiful times we're all together, uh, although alone, we're all here for each other. And you know, and that call out yesterday at eight o'clock, I don't know if anyone had for Oh, did you guys go out at eight? I completely forgot about this. I was on a Zoom call and I heard people <laughs> clapping and woo! clapping and wooing. So I said, "Oh, guys, I have to run." Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. we all left and uh, stood in the street. And so that's another thing. You know, we all, you know, we are in this together, and we the solution comes from us, from us everyday normal normal people, <laughs> uh, you and me, them and us, and everything. You know, we're all in this together, so we can make a change. We can make a change in our home. We can make a change in our gardens. This is a time to reflect on what we can do. Um, there's positivity out of this. Out of this. There's opportunity to, to make the change, change the world and, and change our worlds. Yes, and Extinction Rebellion and Animal Rebellion is not going away at all. We are just adapting to the changes all the time. So stay with us and yeah. keep watching Cooking for Climate videos from others as well. And check out Animal Rebellion, Extinction Rebellion. And don't forget to check out hashtag alone together yeah. and download the guideline if download you, if you need guide. any support. <laughs> You're a good salesman. Don't lose that call. Don't lose that call. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Boom. Love you. Bye.